So I've been hearing a lot of buzz about IONET. So in today's video, I want to do a deep dive, see what all the hype is about. Is there a lot of substance behind this project? And then lay out the information and the facts so that that way you can make a decision for yourself whether it is all hype or this is a great project. Now, my name is Colin. Welcome for those of you who are new. What I do is I do a lot of reviews on projects that I think have great fundamentals that I think would help you on your journey in crypto. Now, before I get started, remember that none of this is financial or investment advice. The crypto market is very volatile and dangerous. Most people lose their money. So make sure you do your own due diligence and research. Finally, like in all of my videos, none of it is sponsored content. I have not spoken to the team, so everything that I say here is my own raw thoughts. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So by now, it should not come as a surprise to anybody. The AI market is growing exponentially. And the hardware that's required, the GPUs that are required, along with other equipment in order to power this computational AI revolution, is predicted by 2030 to be $1.7 trillion. And when we take a look at the complex machine learning market, it's expected to grow from $70 billion at this year to about $800 billion in 2032. So the market is going to be 10x over the next several years. And when you look at the revenue from generative AI, it's at about $137 billion now. And by 2032, that number is supposed to balloon to $1.3 trillion. So if all of this complex competitional need in order to power AI, whether you're talking about a generative AI, computational AI, or complex machine learning algorithms. You require a lot of computational power, and that comes from GPUs. And these GPUs are becoming increasingly expensive. They're more expensive than liquid gold. In a recent interview, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, he talked about the cost of one of its high-powered GPU chips costing more than $30,000. These are the H100, the A100. These are the commercial standard ones that are used to power things like chat GPT. And that's why people like Mark Zuckerberg, Meta, Facebook, they're out there spending $10 billion in order to acquire these commercial GPUs to power their AI revolution. And if you don't know, things like chat GPT, which I think all of us use or have used at some point during the past, it costs us a lot of money to run these, a lot of powerful chips, up to $700,000 a day in order to power that business. And this is why people talk about GPU units as even more important than oil and liquid gold. At their Breakpoint conference, the CEO of IONET talked about this. He brought up this very interesting slide. If you take a look right here, it shows that China is now importing even more GPUs than they do of oil, and the US is not far behind them in this respect. So IONET. Why is the market considering them as one of the solutions to this entire supply crunch of GPUs? So IONET calls themselves the internet of GPUs. They talk about their IO token being the currency of this AI computational revolution. In order for us to have a thorough understanding of this project, I'm gonna break it down into four categories. Number one is their business model. What are they offering? How are they gonna offer a solution to the market? Number two is the VC and the funders behind them. How much money have they raised? Because this this is an arms race and it's an expensive one. Number three is the tokenomics. You learn a lot about the tokenomics, when to enter, when to exit, how to position yourself. So there's always something to learn from the tokenomics. And then number four is how are they different from their competitors, allowing them to partner up with some of the biggest projects within this market. And we hop right here onto their website. You can see they call themselves the internet of GPUs. They're built on Solana blockchain, so it's really quick, fast, and easy. At the heart of their service, they're really a decentralized GPU sharing network, just like most other projects you heard of, like Render, like Akash, like Node AI, but there is a huge difference with this project. If we scroll down onto their website, you can see it's a very beautiful website. They say the power of global GPU resources with a single click. And if you go down, you can see they claim they're better, faster, and cheaper. We're going to talk about why. And then they have 100x, so 100 more times than GPU competitors. We're going to take a look at those numbers. Their partners are obviously very big, right? Solana, Aptos, and then the Render Network, okay? Uh, and then finally, they talk about how you can earn more and at the same time decrease your cost, therefore increasing your efficiency in order to power those AI projects. So really at the core of their service, it's really a marketplace where you could have people who rent GPUs and then the suppliers of GPUs in order to make this economy work. They have three products that you should know about. So IO Cloud, IO Worker, and then IO Explorer. Let's take a look at each one of these and see why they're relevant and important for this project. Now remember how I told you about how expensive it was in order to power machine learning outside of all the AI applications. In order for you to power machine learning, you need powerful GPU clusters. 
GPUs, which is something that all of the competition doesn't have. So all the other GPU aggregators, GPU marketplaces, none of them have this. Now, what makes GPU clusters so important? Now, in order to power machine learning, instead of just having one machine, so one machine, one computer at a time, GPU clusters is like taking a bunch of very high level, complicated machines, all the computers, putting it all together in one and making a supercomputer. That is what GPU clusters are. And in order for you to power a lot of the complex machine learning algorithm, you need GPU clusters. And this is what sets IOnet apart from the rest of the competition. So next, IOWorker. You can think about IOWorker as a way for the company to deliver benefits to those who are supplying them with GPUs. It's not just individuals, but big companies like Render, like Filecoin, who are actually doing this. Now on IOnet, by supplying your idle GPU, you're actually earning rewards even when your GPU is not working. They actually show data right over here that you can earn 15 times more rewards on IONET versus using it for mining. So this is like your own personal assistant in order to optimize your efficiency of earning with your GPUs. They say it's really easy. All you have to do is install their software, log onto the network, and off you go to the races. And then finally, their IO Explorer is extremely useful because here you can see all the metrics. You can see all the GPUs, where they're distributed around the world. You can pick the ones closest to you. You can deploy your project. So when I take a look right over here, you can see that there's over 101,000 verified GPUs that's going right now. Look at the clusters of GPUs that are ready right over here. And you can actually take a look at this map. You can take a look at this map and then you can take a look at each region, you know, how many GPUs there are, what type of GPUs. You can see the H100s right over here. And you can go down and select the one that you want with all the prices laid out. Now, if you take a look at their network map right over here, you could see that they have things all over the place the different clusters right now the total network earnings is over a million dollars right over here okay the total compute hours that are served is almost 800,000 hours total GPU CPU hours you can see the different clusters being created so all of your data is laid out for you like here you can see the workers right over here okay so different earnings you can see the render network right over here. You can see Filecoin. So they're supplying 1,200. And remember, these are high-powered, you know, commercial GPUs that these guys are using. And here's Filecoin, right, for your storage. So you can see huge partners. And then you can take a look at all the data on chain. So everything is laid out in a very transparent way. I really like the IO Explorer. And we jump onto Twitter right over here. You can see House of Chimera did a pretty cool post that talked about how IONET offers the lowest rate for H100. So these are the commercial, the industrial units that people like Facebook use for ideal for AI tasks and they can scale with over 1200 units available. So that's a lot of high powered units. And you can see right over here, comparison for pricing for high end GPUs. Here's IONET, here's a bunch of competitors and even AWS right over here, the cost is like night and day, okay? So they are aiming to solve a huge problem. And if we come right over here onto our next tweet right over here, you can see they're very ambitious with their A100s and H100, the industrial GPU units. They're aiming to build this across a million GPU units, okay? So these guys are very ambitious. So during the recent conference, they talked about this idea of structural arbitrage, being that decentralized GPU provider where they can decrease the cost compared to sort of your web two cloud service provider by 70, 80%, while increasing the revenue for people like miners by 10, 15 times. So instead of taking days to weeks to deploy an AI task on something like AWS, on Google, on Amazon, you can literally do it within minutes on IONET. And it's also permissionless as well. So there's no KYC or lengthy sign up, and you can do it at a fraction of the cost. I think this is the real benefits to services like IONET. So let's take a look at the team, the VC, the funders, and who are the people behind this project. Now, we won't go through an exhaustive list. We're just going to glide through these. But Toy Green is a CEO. He's got a lot of financial background, okay? And then Ahmed is a CEO. He's got a lot of AI background. You can check them out. There's a lot of good people on this team. The invest 
investor list is debt, okay? So Solana Ventures, they're building on Solana. A lot of people of Solana are involved in this project. Hack VC, you know, Multicoin Capital, OKX, one of the biggest exchange, Delphi Digital, The Sandbox, all the usual huge players within Web3 and all the huge VCs are in this. You can see Aptos right here, Animoca Brands, you know, the list goes on and on. So the angel investor, Anatoly Yakovenko, right over here from Solana. You can see Mo Sheik from Aptos and then Avery's from Aptos, Yatsui from Animoca Brands and Sebastian Borget from The Sandbox. So some big players, good advisors. So you could see that there is a lot behind this team. Now in terms of total amount raised, they did raise $30 million at a $1 billion valuation, making them well capitalized in order to execute their projects from major funders and VCs. So if GPU units is the new oil of the economy, the IO token is at the heart of this computational power. So let's take a look at tokenomics, the IO token, and see why it is so important. There is a lot to unpack. So if you take a look right over here at the IO token, first thing is a fixed maximum supply of 800 million. Now of that 800 million, 300 million will be used to be emitted and paid to people who supply GPU units, okay? So suppliers and stakers as rewards. Now these rewards to the supplier and stakers, those 300 million, okay? Keep that in mind. It's actually emitted through time. So notice right over here, it starts from 2025 all the way to 2044. We're talking about a 20 year of reward system, okay? As we start to emit these tokens through time. And at the beginning, it's a little bit higher, but as you go along, the rate becomes less and less, okay? So rewards to stakers and suppliers is over 20 years. This is a deflationary model starting at 8% in the first year and decreases by 1.02% every single year, okay? So about 12% per year until all 800 million token has been reached. So you can see right over here, the yearly emission schedule continues to go down, okay? Now, when we go down over here, you can see the inflation rate. The inflation rate starts out at roughly 7%, continues to drop at six, five, four, and then all the way down until we no longer have it, okay? Now, when we go down here, they talk about the burn mechanism. How is it deflationary? Well, how do they generate their fees? They only do it by two ways. Number one are for the GPU renter fees, okay? By reserving GPUs, everybody who reserves GPU is paying a 0.25%, okay? The payments fees right over here, so you can pay with 100% in USDC, you get charged 2% for that. So you're allowed to pay in USDC, but you're gonna charge 2%. But if you pay an IO token, there are no additional charges. So that creates demand for the IO token. So I like that already. Now for the supplier fees right over here, the same thing. You also pay 0.25%, okay? Same idea, you can pay in USDC or you can pay in IO tokens, again, creating demand for the IO token if you do not pay in USDC. So if you add them both up, a 0.25, 0.25 is a 0.5 of a percent, okay? So half a percent. So let's say they did $10 million in business, okay? And remember, this industry, millions of dollars are being put into billions of dollars to power AI. So on $10 million, they make 50,000. On $100 million, they make $500,000. That money is going to be put back into the system in order to buy up those IO tokens in order to create that deflationary tokenomics, that mechanics over time. So I like this model already out of the gate. So when you take a look at the token allocation over 20 years, I think it is a decent tokenomics. So 50% of it is allocated towards community. You can see right over here. And then in terms of early backers, these are the seed people who put their money in very early, 12.5%. The early backers in terms of series A, 10%, the initial core contributors, which is the team, 11%, and then R&D for the research ecosystem, that's 16%. So basically it's half and half. Now, if you take a look at these percentage right over here, individually they might not seem high, but 50% for team early backers, that is a high percentage. But when we take a look at the admission schedule, and then we also take a look at the vesting schedule. So I'm gonna come right over here. When we take a look at the vesting schedule, you can see that right away, 200 million tokens is going to be available at the token generation event, okay? And then the rest of it is vested through time. Remember we talked about those communities community rewards, those 300 million, okay? They're gonna be vested and rewarded through time. Now the team, Series A, and the seed people, so basically the early investors, early contributors, they actually have a cliff of about one year, okay? So going from here time zero into one year, we're gonna be through the bull market already. So that's their cliff for a single year, they can't sell anything.
And then for these people, the team right over here, they're vested over 36 months, okay? So these guys are vested over 36 months, so a long vesting schedule. The Series A and the C people are also vested over 24 months, so over two years and three years. So you have a long cliff, you know, you have tokens being emitted over time over 20 years, and then also the team, the early investors, they have a cliff of a year, also by a three-year or a two-year vesting structures. Nobody can dump on you early in the start. I want you to remember these tokenomics because you want to take a look at them carefully. Because let's say you're considering to enter this project, right? Based on your own research, your evaluation of it. So you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't be dumped on here because right over here. Everybody's locked in. All the early investors can't sell. But as we go along, there will be selling pressure. So into year two, that one year mark after that cliff, when everything gets unlocked, that's when selling pressure starts. So you want to be able to use this information in order to time your entries and possibly your exit. Nobody could time the bottom or the top. So let's say we go through the full bull market. It's a year now, you know, it's October of 2025, December of 2025. We've gone through its full raging bull. And you're looking at a project like this and you're thinking about entering. At that point, I would think twice because now the cliff is done vesting schedule started you know tokens are starting to come to the market and if it's at an all-time high there's going to be a huge sell pressure so that's why individually personally i study tokenomics very carefully when i'm considering something as a possible potential product that I may put my money into. And then finally, a word about competition and then partnerships as well. So first of all, why would somebody choose IONET versus somebody like Render versus somebody like Aethers, which is also an aggregator of GPUs? Well, remember that concept I told you about GPU clustering? Now, IONET claims to be the only product the only project within this sector that can supply that GPU clustering. So that's why it explains why a lot of major products like Render is coming to them, Aether is coming to them, you know, Filecoin, Gaiman. So there are a lot of huge projects. If we jump onto Twitter and take a look at this post, they talk about the giants in Deepin and AI are joining forces, okay? So together, IONET and Aether Cloud. So for those of you who don't know, I did a video on Aether Cloud. Check it out. They're one of the largest providers. Those guys have raised hundreds of millions of dollars, okay? Um, to bring unmatched enterprise grade. So the key here is enterprise grade because a lot of Aether's GPU nodes are, are also um, uh, enterprise grade. So those are the H100, A100, you know, the 30 grand, 40 grand types of GPUs that normal people like you and I can't get a hold of. So they talk about how together they'll build access for over 600,000 GPUs across 139 countries on IONET, okay? Which now includes Aether Cloud supply of 40,000 plus grades of enterprise H100 and A100. This is an important post to me because what it says to me is that even a large project like Aether Cloud has to come and work with IONET, okay? There's a reason for that, right? That entire, you know, machine learning focus and using GPU clusters is what the competition is lacking. So now they're coming to supply their 40,000 industrial grade units you could see the supply behind IONET is huge, okay? So they talk about how this partnership includes a total of $100 million commitment from both projects to advance the network and community growth. So this is a, a huge leap of confidence. I won't jump into all the other partnerships, so basically people like Render, you know, which is a generative AI rendering service, okay? One of the biggest who's touched, you know, $4 billion already during this market cycle is coming to IONET and, and big projects like Filecoin. So those are the major projects that are working with them. So you could see that they are making significant progress within this area. So my initial thoughts on IONET is that it is a very unique service. It certainly stands out among its competitors. There's tons of companies that are doing this, you know, GPU sharing networks. You're going to see a mushroom of them explode in this upcoming year. But IONET is a little bit different. They're doing something that nobody else is doing. They're also getting all the major partners on board. They've raised a decent amount of money and have huge funders behind them. They also have the armamentarium. They have the supplies, which a lot of other people do not have. So I think that this project will do well i'm going to watch it very very carefully so token's going to start trading soon it's going to be on kucoin it's going to be on gate.io bybit and other exchanges now what i would do is i would watch this token if you know me i never trade out of day one 
Also think about the tokenomics very carefully if you're considering one of these GPU sharing services or network. There's a lot of competition. But these are one of the projects that should we go into the bear market, you know, they've well executed, they're on their way. It's like being able to buy something like Solana during the bear market, okay? So I'm gonna watch these guys very closely and see how they do. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video. I hope that you learned a lot about IONET, that you got a good value out of this video. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and I will continue to bring you more content like this. I will see you next time.